On this episode of Dish with Mary, I meet up with London chef Dan Hayes at his home in Victoria. After cooking in many high-end restaurants in London, he and his wife Michaela moved to Victoria to start a family and the city's premier cooking school, The London Chef, which has taught over 2,000 cooking classes to an audience of over 100,000 students. Dan is an avid hunter and outdoorsman and is also the host of APTN's Moose Meat and Marmalade. To me, cooking should be fun. And finding ways to make it accessible is what motivates me. I love the sizzle of butter melting in a pan, the smell of cinnamon while I'm baking. I need to touch food while it's cooking and of course, taste it, even if I can't see it very well. The kitchen is my happy place. That's why I'm visiting chefs across Canada who feel the same way I do and inviting them to cook with me in my kitchen. Welcome to Dish with Mary. Today we've got a special treat. We've got Dan here with us, the London chef. Dan, what are we cooking? Well, I, you know, I brought you some meat. I brought you some mushrooms as well. I'll tell okay. you about those in a moment. But we're gonna do um, venison with a wild mushroom risotto and um, a little bit of corned Canada goose in the risotto. So the beauty of all this is we have everything measured out, out in front of us. But what are in these plates? Well, this is um, black tail deer from Vancouver Island. So this is a piece of leg from a very small buck that I shot. And this is a piece of backstrap, so loin from a very large buck that a friend of mine, Andrew, shot. And this, very importantly, Canada goose. Canada goose. This is a piece of Canada goose breast that I've, that I've corned like one would corn beef. And it's great to use instead of pancetta to start a risotto or something like that. You get that lovely, like, meaty umami flavor to start. So can you eat it directly like this? Oh, yeah. You Absolutely. could. Absolutely. I do all the time. And what does it taste like? Well, beautiful. Like this with a little bit of pickle and um, mustard. It's delicious. Oh, that's fantastic. It's delicious. It's, it's very mild. Very mild. It's wild and it's clean and it's lean. That is very lean. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, I'm with you. What do we do next? So we're gonna cook this first. The venison leg. And you've got a couple of pans on the cooktop already heating up. Already heating up and the oven's hot as well. Cause the leg we're gonna cook longer to look at all the connective tissue. So in front of us, we've got the leg. Yeah. And we've got a whole bunch of connective tissue Correct. in the actual meat. And that's the difference between the leg and the loin. And the loin. Loin leg leaner. Leg, leg loin, leg loin. Okay, got there it. There you go. So good whack of seasoning on it because, you know, when you're doing something that's essentially like a roast, you're not going to get much of the crust on the outside. And you're being pretty generous with the salt yeah, and the yeah, pepper. Yeah, like, you know, if yeah. in doubt, get it on there sort of thing, you know? Yeah. Then good whack of canola oil and that pan is really hot. And only put the tip in to begin and see what happens. Once you hear that sizzle. Yeah. So you want like how loud is the how loud is the sizzle? You know, cooking, I mean, like you'll know this more than anyone. Cooking isn't just about visuals, it's about sound. I love as that well. you said that. It is. You know? Okay. So now it's like a slightly higher pitch sound. So just get it in there and let it go. Should we start on our risotto? I would love that. Okay, so we've already have the venison stock pre-boiling. Yeah. So we've got that ready. We're gonna be adding that to our rice Correct. as we go along. Perfect. And I got mushrooms. They're pine mushrooms from New Holt Territory, Bella Coola, chanterelles from the Chandler Territory, Vancouver Island, and some button mushrooms that I bought. And you've dehydrated these yeah, yourself? Yeah, yeah. Delicious, huh? Yeah. Look at this meat. Nice, nice, nice color now. And how long would you say each side you want to kind of cook that up a little bit before putting it in the oven? Three or four minutes. Three to four minutes per side, pop it into the 400 degree oven and you're set. I like that. Next. Risotto. 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 So, shall I chop this? Are you going to use the machine? Yes! So, what this is, it's a handheld manual kind of food processor. And it's got some blades on the inside. Yeah. Like zigzag blades and a button on top that we can push down. Now, this is great if you're not comfortable with a knife. Yeah. If you're nervous about having a yeah. blade. Yeah. And you need to get this chopped up and into the pan, into the bowl, so we don't hold it up the recipe. I'm gonna put half an onion right underneath, put the food processor manual over and press down. And all it's doing is just That's chopping so up cool. those onions and you're ready to go. Okay, let's stick it in. Okay, so you're just gonna slide in that onion off the cutting yep. board into the pot. And I like to put oil in afterwards. And I think it's a good tip for people because yes. your oil burns 
whilst you're desperately trying to chop up your onion. Right. And like, it doesn't make any difference. We've all been told for some bizarre reason, heat the pan up, then heat the oil up, then put the onion. Why? Like, it makes absolutely zero difference. So onions cooking down. Yep. Uh, rice. What rice are we using? We're using a borio, why? Well, you could use carnaroli, you could use violoni nano, but we're using our borio because of all the risotto rices, a borio is the one that is the easiest to get right. And it's, it's the one you can do the restaurant method. You can cook it halfway, yep. cool it down, and then finish it at a later later time. Yes, okay, so it holds up well. Exactly. So I know, I just want to explain because you've just added the rice into the pot, no liquid, no nothing. Yeah, exactly, just dry. You want to toast it off. This is called the tostatura, toasting the rice a little bit, you see? Yeah. Toasting that rice a little bit, very good. Then white wine. And listen to the noise. So you ready for the, the noise? Yes, please. The pan has to be thirsty. So. Ah. Oh, and you're getting a facial from all that exactly. steam as well. A wine facial. A wine, that sounds all right, doesn't right. it? No, that could be something a, new, there. a new spa treatment. We've got something there. Okay, so while this bubbles away, let's go over here. Okay, so a we're moving back of, um, to our cutting board. What do we got? A little bit of goose. Like not loads, you know, because it's salty and strong. We live in Canada, and for very good reason, wild game isn't something that can be bought or sold. You know, you can't go to a store and buy Canada goose. Right. Perhaps you're a hunter, perhaps one of your friends is a hunter, perhaps your neighbor's a hunter. If not, just use a bit of pork or something else, or nothing at all. So while you've added that goose in, we're gonna stir that again, and then on to the next step. So, a little bit of mushroom. I'm just gonna take some of these, you know, but you could call it a Blanc de Paris, if you wanted to sound very sexy. It's very fancy. It is, isn't it? Yeah. So what are you giving, just like a little thin slice? Yeah, just nice and nice and fine. So it almost disappears. There we go. And you don't need very, you don't need very much. You almost want it to disappear in there. So give this a good stir. Now, um, the tostatura is done. That's all toasted. You see? Mm, it smells lovely. It smells good already, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, bit of thyme. Do you see thyme over there? I We've do. got some thyme in a bowl here. How many sprigs do you want? Ah, chuck that in. A little yeah. few sprigs right into the pot. I think it's so unnecessary to pick thyme. I'd rather do that and then pull out a naked sprig at the end. Uh, you we know what we I mean? were meant to cook together because I love that. So you don't have to fuss with it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, stock. Here's our stock. So we're just gonna move that stock pot over. Oh, you're pouring it right into the rice. Yeah, and like a good whack, people say you have to put a tiny bit in, you don't. A good whack in there, give it a good stir. And people say you have to cook, stir risotto nonstop. You don't, you have to stir it a lot. Okay, come over to the cutting board. Yeah. What do we got next? So the legs in the, the legs in the oven. This is the, this is the back strap. So it's along the spine. Yeah, along the spine. Some black pepper. Okay. Some black pepper. Some salt. Like I said, you're being very generous. You've got to be generous because, you know, when you're cooking meat like this or anything where you're not going to eat the entire crust yourself. So on this, you know, you're going to slice this and put bits on the plate. You're not eating all the crust yourself. You need to season that crust very heavily. Okay. A steak where you are eating the entire steak, you can season it far more lightly. Okay, so we're just going liberal on both sides. Canola oil in the pan, get it nice and hot. Okay, so how are we gonna test the pan to ensure that it's hot? So we just put the tip in, see if that's hot. Yep. And it's nice and hot, so stick it in. Perfect. And just leave that for a moment, we'll chuck it in the oven, and we're looking very good. Amazing, we're gonna put our venison in the oven, get that cooking, we're gonna continue our risotto. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Dish with Mary, we'll be right back. We now return to Dish with Mary. A few weeks ago, I went out to Victoria to visit the London chef in his home to chat about his day-to-day -day life. Dan, thank you so much for having us. Welcoming us into your home. It's fabulous. I'm glad you're actually here in my, in my kitchen, in my house. Yeah, great. Okay, I want to talk about and learn more about you. Yeah. I hear an accent. 
Where are you from? And you're right. I, I you know, I would avoid. I, I'm from England. I was born in London. Okay. And then I moved here 16 years ago, straight to Victoria. Was food something you were always interested in? Was it something that who who kind of inspired that, or was it just something that you know food was always around at home? Yes, my late grandmother was a fabulous cook. My mother is a fabulous cook, and food was certainly a big part of family life. Mm -hmm. What intrigued me was the connection of wildlife to the kitchen. So I grew up fishing and hunting. You know, I wasn't going to go in the city and sort of set up a hedge fund or become a brain surgeon or anything. Those options sadly were out. Mm -hmm. So I got a job in a very good restaurant. I worked for Rick Stein. That was my first restaurant I went into. Um, and started, started cooking. You know, went in at the bottom as a commie chef and just started going. Moving to Canada, did you go right into cooking? Well, not really. I um, moved to Canada mm -hmm. and I got a job in construction and I'd never done anything but been a chef. I'd worked my way up to the point of being a head chef and running restaurants, in fact, opening restaurants for people, it's the truth, by the time I was left London. So you cooked a Michelin star yeah, restaurant. Yeah, for sure. And then you came here and you worked construction. I did. So in the evenings, I got a job as a line cook at a restaurant called Pescatori's, which is this wonderful seafood restaurant in Victoria, working for Mike Murphy, and worked as a line cook doing a shift in the evening. Was it a shift to cook in the UK and then cooking here in Canada? I think decent restaurants the world over are fairly similar. I think the culture in kitchens is fairly similar. Mm -hmm. One of the great things about knowing how to cook at a restaurant level is that one can go anywhere and get a job. I mean, I would argue if you're a cook, a chef, you could turn up in any town, any city, anywhere in the world and that afternoon have a job, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's one of these great advantages. Um, if you can chop an onion, you can get work. Do you also run a school? I, I do and I did. We had um, downtown in Victoria for 12 years, the London Chef, which was you know, 2,500 square feet, a great big bespoke cooking school that we built ourselves mm. where Viking Range is set in a big U courts in the middle. So it's fabulous, you know. That came to an end and we then took 12 years of our business mm. and turned it into an online business. And now we have cooking school with the London Chef, which is this online um, Zoom experience. It's a membership-based um, mm -hmm. business that um, people cook along with me right here. So in addition to your online classes, do you do any in-person events? Yes. We do classes at Seaside, and Seaside is this incredible orchard and cidery. And um, we've had a relationship with them for a long time, and now we do cooking classes in their barn. And it's great, it's this beautiful barn overlooking the orchard, mm -hmm. out to the ocean. You see the sun coming down, and we set up on wooden tables a cooking class. And it's great fun. We drink some cider, and we cook, and we eat, and we have fun, and um, that's what we do. Okay, now one thing we haven't talked about was and is moose meat and marmalade. Yes. Please, let's talk about that. Well, <laughs> moose meat and marmalade <laughs> is a huge part of my life. We, we started filming the show eight years ago. Mm -hmm. It went into development 10 years ago. As you know, these things take a while to start off. Mm -hmm. And myself and my co-host, Art Napoleon, we go all over Canada, all over Europe, all over the UK, mm -hmm. and we hunt and we fish and we cook and we learn, and we learn about conservation and the environment and sustainability, and it's been amazing. Um, absolutely incredible. And where do you see yourself in the future? Tangibly, I see myself here because I love it. I'm, I, I love where I live, I love my home, I love Canada, I love Victoria, I love Vancouver Island, and this is my home for forever, you know, I, I love it here. Um, Work-wise, you know, I, I, I work in the prison system, and we run courses there, which is a very meaningful to us and I think vital, um, vital work. So I see myself doing more of that. But um, I'm really enjoying working in television. And it's something that's giving me great opportunity to do lots of different things and have lots of different experiences. And in particular, I, I'm fascinated and humbled by indigenous communities. And I think that is certainly, will always be slightly part of my life, work-wise and otherwise, yeah. Join us after the break as we finish our venison and risotto recipe with the London Chef on Dish with Mary. We now return to Dish with Mary. 
Welcome back to Dish with Mary. So we've taken our venison out of the oven and we've got a risotto almost done. Yes. I'm hoping, if I pull this off and put it over here, I'm hoping in a moment you'll stir a bunch of um, cheese and butter in for me. And I'll finish glazing this. So I've got the loin less time, the leg longer. So we've just moved the pot of risotto from the stove top onto the cutting board. I'll work on this. Yeah, you work on that. Awesome. And I'll just glaze, I'll just glaze this meat with a little bit of butter and a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Okay, so what kind of cheese do we have here? It smells like Parmesan Ruggiero. Grano Padano, I think. Is this grano? I think, I think it's mm. grano. I think it is. Okay, I'm just, I'm actually just using my cheese grater right Very over good. a plate. Lovely. How much do you want me to do here? Maybe a bit more, a bit more. Let's be naughty, shall we? Let's do it. You need the cheese. I mean, I would say this is about a cup. Yeah, perfect. There we go. I mean, look at that. Absolutely deadly. Look at that glaze. Beautiful, isn't it? Don't you think? So shiny. You can, you're smelling that glaze like right away. Yeah, amazing. That vinegar. Amazing. So, a bit of um, a bit of butter in there. Oh, so we're looking at about a tablespoon? Yeah, a tablespoon of butter, a bit of cheese. I mean, traditionally, people didn't really put cheese in the risotto, you got the cheesy flavor by having some of the, the, the rinds from Parmigiano Reggiano or Grano or Pecorino in the stock. Yes. This is very modern and extravagant. I no, I save all my uh, rind of my cheese. Do you like my naked sprig? That's fantastic. Isn't so that you see? It works very well, doesn't it? Right, so we just pick that out. All the leaves see? are off of that sprig mm, of thyme. Delicious. It's very good. And you're enjoying it. Yeah, a little nibble, you know. As I lick my fingers, okay. How's that risotto looking? Oh my gosh. I just tasted a little bit of it. Yummy? Fantastic, yummy. So it's nice and creamy, which is what we wanted. Alonda, you know we talk, you know we talk about risotto in two ways. Yeah. We say tight and dry or wet and loose. And this is wet and loose, alonda with waves. And that's absolutely perfect. And when you go like this, it should make the right, it should make the right noise. Oh, so you're just using the pot to toss it around. Exactly. I love that. Okay, and you're That's hearing the that noise slapping. That's the noise you want. Alonda, the slapping noise, wet and loose. Let's bring our pot back onto the cutting board. Excellent, well done. All that cheese is going in. Do you want to give it a stir? I get, yeah, thank this. you so much. Perfect. Oh, it smells so good. It really does, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay, so put that to one side. That's ready to go. Okay. Now the meat. Loin. Loin onto the cutting board. We're going to cut this up. Leg. Chunks, slices. What are we doing? Slices. Really, we should leave this to rest for a lot longer. 20 minutes, half an hour. 20 minutes, half like, an hour. Really, like, really, it shouldn't be steaming, but we're hungry and we don't have time. So let's just cut it. You yeah, know? I mean, I'm impatient. Yeah, exactly. Now, I saw you doing something yeah. to test yeah. the readiness of the meat. Yeah. You had it in the pan and you were poking it. Are you right handed? I am. So am I. Go okay. like that. Go, Go like that to wiggle your hand, yeah. first of all. So I'm wiggling my hand. Then touch your thumb to that finger. Then touch that. So thumb to Fing index finger, finger, and then pressing on the bulge at the base of the thumb. Yeah, really soft, rare. Thumb to index finger, rare. Medium rare. Thumb to middle finger, medium rare. Medium. Thumb to ring finger, medium, and then thumb to pinky. Well done. And you're doing that with your four fingers and your thumb. It what ish, do we want? Ish. Rare, mm, we, medium we, rare? We want however it looks when we cut it open. <laughs> If it's raw, you've got to eat it raw. And if it's well done, you have to eat venison well so done. So when you were poking it on top, Chef's you always were... right. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Let's slice this up. It wants to be, yeah, no, no, look at that. That is exactly what it wants to be like. Like, beautiful. Oh, so you we've got a little bit of pink on the inside. Yeah, absolutely. So it wants to be just like that. Ow, it's really hot. So I'm just going to slice. I was wondering how you were just hanging on to that hot piece of meat with your hand. Back in my restaurant days, I probably could, but now I'm a bit of a wimp. So slice a bit of that up, that's the loin. Slice a bit of the leg up, which will be cooked a bit a bit more and is a different texture, completely different texture. Now, I don't know if I asked you this, but when we're doing it, you always want either a fattier piece and a lean piece. To yeah. Give you that mix of the two. Exactly. And they're gonna taste different and they're from different animals. And here's the thing about wild game. It doesn't always taste the same, you know? This hasn't been bred to taste the same and fed the same diet. These are different creatures that had different lives and had different experiences, and their meat is gonna be different. It'll taste, okay. And that's the big difference between raised game and wild game. It is a creature with its own experiences. Right. And those experiences, through the two years of its life, will affect what happens now when we eat it. Okay. 
Got it. If that makes sense. Okay, are we plating? We're plating. Okay. Give that risotto a little stir. What are we doing? We're just putting a little dollop? Yeah, a bit of risotto in each bowl, I think. I mean, nothing I do is a little dollop. We need a couple of yeah, spoons no, no, no. of that you need, at the yeah, bottom of the plate. Yeah, don't mess about when it yeah. comes to risotto, I think. So some risotto in each bowl, like that. Yeah. Very good. Take a little bit of the leg. A couple that's of one, slices, you know, place it right over top the risotto. Oh my goodness. And a little bit of the, the loin. Yep. A little bit of the leg. A little bit of the loin. And... Just because everyone wants to join the party? You know what, maybe... <laughs> go in and just get a little bit of that glaze. A little bit of that over there. <gasps> which is almost like a bernoisette, a sort of balsamic bernoisette. Yes. Right from the pot over top, all of that deliciousness in the plate. A little taste for the chef. How are we feeling? Oh. <laughs> How are we feeling? We're feeling good? For today's venison and risotto recipe, you can visit our website at ami.ca slash dish dash recipes. This smells delicious, Dan. Thank you so much for visiting us, sharing your recipe, cooking with me. Thank you. It was Thanks so much me. fun. And for you at home, thank you for watching. See you next time on another episode of Dish with Mary. Production services provided by Frank Digital. Hosted by me, Mary Mamalini. Guest chef, Dan Hayes. Producers, Chris McIver, Libby Lee. Director, Chris McIver. Director of photography, Braden Music. Food stylist, Amanda Bebo. Produced in association with Accessible Media Inc. Integrated described video consultant, M. Williams. Supervising producer, Michelle Dudas. Copyright 2023. An AMI original production.